Welcome back to another episode of Paint Society. Now in this episode, I'm gonna show you and give you the best tips for painting a black car, whether you're blending or painting a full car. These tips are really gonna help you when it comes to getting a cleaner paint job to really minimize the amount of buffing you're gonna to have to do before the customer gets the car. Now the particular car we have is an Acura TLX and we did a lot of body work to that rear door and we're gonna be blending into the front door. So we have two panels here and well, we don't wanna to have to buff too much on this vehicle. So the very most important thing you can do when you wanna get a cleaner job, it's is your prep. Now prior to this vehicle coming into the paint booth, it's been washed off, it's been degreased, it's been completely blown off and all the panels have been prepped with a 600 grit and a gray scuff pad around the edges. So if you're really considering about getting a really clean paint job, you gotta put the work in previous in order to get the results you want in the end. You can't expect to get a clean paint job just by bringing this into the booth and you haven't washed it or cleaned it off previously. Now it's all been washed down with wax and grease remover and a water-based cleaner and it is ready to spray and i'm going to show you a quick tip when mixing up your base coat what you can do to really help smooth it out so your clear coat can lay much easier and cleaner so we've already got our paint code nh893p mixed up now we already have it reduced according to the way it should be it's two to one now here's something they're not going to teach you what you want to do with your blacks is you want to reduce it by 10% more reducer. And how do you find that out? Well, right here is 12 ounces mixed up. And it's very simple. All you gotta do is take out your calculator. You do 12 times 0.10, and that will give you 1.2 ounces. So you're gonna add 1.2 ounces more of the reducer. That's how to mix it 10% more by volume. And of course, we're using extra slow always. And basically at the end of this, we'll just have 13.2. So I'll add one ounce right there, 0.2. So basically one more ounce and we're good to go. Now let's go ahead and let's spray this on the car and I'll show you the effects of using 10% more reducer. And the spray gun we're gonna be using is our DB1, of course. If you wanna be serious about getting good results, get good guns. We're not using any cheap guns to get any sort of results that can be hit or miss. We wanna make sure that our results each and every time are exactly the same. So we're running a 1.3 here, and we'll run this around 14 to 16 PSI in this particular spray gun. Now another tip, when you're doing a black or even white uh, paint job, you wanna use a brand new tack rag. You don't want any residues left over from original paint job. And when you tack, you wanna use a low tack rag. You don't, you don't wanna really push into it, so it's just kinda gliding on the surface. And you do also wanna tack around the plastic because believe it or not, the plastic can hold the dust and guess where that dust is going to go? It's gonna go right into your paint job. So let's make sure that we're doing a thorough tack and when you tack, it's like you're painting, all right? That's 75% overlap. You always wanna keep everything consistent. So when you're wiping down the car or when you're uh, spraying, it's all the same thing. You're getting in the rhythm each and every time when you're priming or doing everything on the vehicle of painting that car for the very first time that the actual car is given to you. Now, as far as tacking is considered, I only really tacked before uh, we put base coat down and before a clear coat sometimes. You don't wanna keep on tacking because that can create a lot of friction, a lot of things on the actual panel that can add dirt and dust and things like that. Now, now when it comes down to your first coat of base, you just wanna get medium wet coverage. You're not gonna completely cover it on the first coat. You should never, under any circumstances, try to get full coverage on the first coat. If you try to get full coverage and keep putting it on, putting it on with a wet base coat, sometimes that base will never dry and then you think it's dry, you put your clear coat on it and that can actually still be soft underneath. So listen to Paint Society, this is the correct way to do it. Allow your material to really flash off we're using an extra slow reducer, so it's gonna take a little bit longer to flash, but believe it or not, it's gonna be the quickest way because it's gonna lay down the smoothest. I'm gonna take my first coat and cover up all of my base coat here. We should be doing a blend on the quarter panel, but I'm gonna keep it its way from the quarter panel as much as possible. We did get the blend on the front door.
is it, guys. I'm not trying to do any crazy coverage on the first coat. Let the paint cover itself. Right in here, since we're using that extra 10% of reducer, that paint right in this area is going to lay down completely smooth. We don't have to worry about any dry edge or not using any clear blender or anything like that. This really helps uh, get away from using the clear blender. Uh, on silvers, I do use it, but on a black paint job, I don't think it's needed. It's so hot today and the paint proof is pushing around 99 degrees that this stuff is already drying. Um, and that little bit extra reducer is gonna help thin it out just a little bit and it will flash off just a touch quicker. And just after five minutes, this is ready for the second coat. You can see it's nice and dull. Now another thing, I'm not going to seal. I didn't seal on black. Sometimes sealer can add a little bit of dirt dust. Although I always recommend sealing. If you want a clean paint job, try to prep your primer a little bit better. I prime prep this up to 600 grit, which on black is totally fine. Granted, this is a metallic black, but still you're not gonna have really any sand scratches. And another thing with black, sometimes it will look scratchy when you base it. Believe it or not, when you clear coat it, it all goes away. You wanna make sure you're not basing over 320 grit though. You wanna base at least over 600 and you should be fine. But we're gonna go ahead and apply that second coat right now. This is covering honestly really well. I'm gonna put uh, two more coats down. Uh, my second coat here is gonna extend a little bit further into that front door and then we'll see what it looks like. And just after a short five minutes, actually, again, it's ready to go. We're gonna lay down our third coat. We'll extend it a little bit more. And this is going on completely smooth. Your extra slow reducer, uh, boys and girls, it's really going to help keep that black paint job smooth. And remember one thing, it's not like your dirt just all of a sudden comes in your clear coat. Your dirt's been there the whole time. It's just that your clear coat highlights the dirt in your base coat. So if you have clean base coat, well, then you're gonna have a clean clear coat. How do you get a clean base coat? I remember what I talked about in the beginning of the video, prepping, cleaning, sanding thoroughly. You're not gonna get a clean base coat unless you have a clean surface to put the base coat on. You think about it, paint is very simple. I tell you guys, don't overthink it. This is why. You have clean surfaces, you have clean paint. It's very, very, very simple. Well, this is the way it looks. Now, it's ready for a clear coat, and you always want to give a little bit more time before clear coat, so I gave it 15 minutes instead of that five after a look flash. This looks beautiful. I'm telling you, it looks nice and smooth. I'm not going to attack it because I don't want to add any sort of dust or contamination to the surface. It doesn't look like it needs it, and with the extra slow reducer, it just lays on smooth, so you usually don't have that overspray like you would if you were using a medium reducer or something like that. So we're going to be using our Segola. This is the uh, Segola 4600 Extreme Digital version. I run this around 26, 27 PSI. Now, the whole point of getting a clean black spray job is to not go crazy with the first coat. You just wanna put the clear on. Some people will walk the whole side. I'm not good with that. I'll probably start from the front here and I'll stop midway through. I'll never stop right in the middle and then I'll finish from here all the way over. Now, another good tip that you can remember is you can first clear coat the, the uh, plastic if you want, that will kind of hold down dust. If you're in a bad environment, you can clear coat all this and that will really help you out as well. For now, let's lay down the first coat and we'll stop it around here and then continue it. Now here we go on that first coat. You never wanna lay it down too wet. 
It laid down a little wetter than I would like over in this area because that's clear on clear, but I'm really going to allow this area to really, really, really flash off. You can see there's actually a dent in here. For you guys that don't know too much about uh, blend panels, you just gotta basically clear over anything that's over here or else you're gonna have to paint the fender and this is just a blend panel. So anything in this area, I always generally fix, but if it's past midway through the door, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. But uh, customer is only paying for a blend panel anyways. On this side, it's looking pretty good. A little dry spray here. Not too concerned about that. On that second coat, I'll just really um, put it on just a little bit wetter and smooth it out. Now, I'm gonna allow this to really flash. I'm gonna give it 10 minutes. I'm gonna probably turn the heat up to around 115 degrees just really let it get sticky, and then that second coat uh, will have something really good to grab onto. After 15 minutes, it's ready for the second coat. I'm gonna give it a perspective from up above, and we'll just watch how I'm keeping it moving, 75% overlap, and also checking it from the bottom up, making sure it's still completely wet. Oh, we got it all clear, and I got it all cleared up, and I'm really, really happy with it. And I really hope that these tips and tricks helped you in the video. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. It's been drying for about a good 15 minutes now. The most important thing, too, with black and clear coat is you want to allow it to dry properly. It doesn't end right when you're finished spraying. You really have to get a good paint job just by allowing the paint to cure properly. And what I mean by that is if you have fans, let them run. If you're in a booth, let it run. I don't go right to the heat right away because if you go right to the heat, sometimes it can dry not properly. And I like to allow it to just let it breathe for about 15 minutes. And if you need to cure, then you can cure. But take a look at this, guys. This is impeccable. I maybe have one piece of dirt right there, but for the most part, this will not get buffed at all. There is absolutely no reason. And since we are not buffing it, we are really saving time on buffing black with the compound, the polish, and the swirls that come with it. You never make money in buffing. Really try to get a clean job before. You're really gonna benefit if you're in a body shop, if you're a painter, if you're doing your own buffing. Get the cars in, get the cars out, and do it with care, and do it with efficiency. Just following these steps will really, really help you get a beautiful, clean paint job. And guys, remember, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next episode. <laughs>